Hey, it's your girl, Miss Trina, with Chat with Trina, and it is Talk About It Tuesday. And today, we are talking about how to buy that new home or sell your new home with Miss Monique Jackson. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. This is Miss Trina with Chat with Trina. Actually, it's Talk About It Tuesday on Chat with Trina. And this is the first... Um, what is this? The first, the first episode, I guess you want to call it that, of the first chat with Trina of the new year for 2022. I'm super excited. I want to remind you that make sure that you go to youtube.com slash chat with Trina, subscribe, and then hit the bell. Unfortunately, this year, I did not make it to my 500 to make it to my total of 500 subscribers. So we just going to dust it off or shake it off and we're going to keep it moving and we're going to get them in 2022, right? Make sure y'all share. Today, I'm excited because I have my friend Monique Jackson here um, and she is a realtor. Um, I don't know if that's a proper name. If not, she's going to tell us in a minute. And um, she's going to talk to us about um, ho- the home buying process. And I've asked her because I've ran into so many of my friends that they're all excited that they get to that little piece with the closing. And it's like, Ugh, they're mad, just angry. And it's fresh. Excuse me. It's frustrating. So I've asked Monique to speak about that as well. Hi, Monique. Hey, Trina. Hi. How are you? I was there. <laughs> What'd you say? Here. Say who's ever there. Good to be here. Yes. I appreciate you here. doing this for us. I thank you so yes. much. Tell us the name of your um, company. Uh, I work with more of a boutique uh, real estate company in the Humble Kingwood area, and it's Red Door Realty and Associates. Uh, I've been there with them for about 12 years and been a real estate agent for about 20 years. Wow. Okay. So you, you've been through the, through the, through the uh, ring, through the, the ring, through the ups and the downs. The yes. Ugly. Um, Absolutely. Real tea. So you've always stayed in that area, but do you do the whole city? Oh, anywhere, anywhere. There's a great client, a sale, a buyer, an investor, a renter, uh, whoever it is, you know, I service the, all of the, the Houston area, you know, that's a, it's big territory. So I can be in Angleton potentially one day, Katy, back in Humble, the Kingwood, uh, all over in the city, Acres Home, wherever I need to go. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Cool. I also, um, you also were helping me. Um, I was trying to get me a restaurant slash bar. That's right. <laughs> you know, you commercial. With that. Yeah, commercial. So you do commercial. Yeah, do well. commercial as well. Yeah. So, Office buildings. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could be a church or like that. a restaurant. Real estate has changed a lot over the years. Uh, Houston has always been a great market, but of course, the market has changed tremendously over the last two years uh, since COVID. Uh, really took us all, I think, by surprise. Just as a matter of fact, when COVID, when that first started with COVID, uh, I just was trying to figure out how I was going to be able to eat because we're just thinking everything is going to bottom out. Uh, sales that I had going, people were backing out. Uh, sellers had their on the market it was because they didn't want people in their homes. They didn't, you know, so all of those things were happening. So it was a very scary time uh, in the beginning. So none of us, nobody would have ever expected uh, the explosion uh, yeah. that occurred all over the U.S., really. Um, but uh, it happened. And so I think for the most part, uh, certainly, I guess you could say for sellers, uh, it has been a great thing because I've had people who, may have purchased a home two or three years ago, uh, you know, you know, $250,000 home, mm-hmm. I'm able to sell their home for 350,000, you know, so uh, depending upon the area and location, uh, you know, it has been a great market for uh, sellers. So that's what they, they, they mean when they say it's a seller's market? Right now. That's what it means when it says it's a seller's market. You know, sellers have bought their homes reasonably priced, and now you know the market has shot up. Um, you know, so all that equity, uh, you know, they have they currently have in their homes, which nobody would have really expected. But uh, they say really a part of the reason for that happening, a lot of things due to COVID. Uh, interest rates were very low. You know, two point six, point eight. You know, uh, that's that's low. That's low. Uh, also, more people were at home. So because people were at home, sitting in their homes, thinking about their environment, you know, yeah. I like it in here or, or I want something bigger or mm-hmm. space or um, and even just the fact that COVID is here. I've talked to a lot of contractors and a lot of contractors are saying people will have to prepare maybe that they're not going to travel as much. So they want to make their home their oasis. So they put pools and, mm-hmm. you know different things you know like I said are they getting bigger homes or downsizing or, 
going to the country because now you can work from anywhere. You can work. From so there's so much shifting and movement. It has just caused this. I remember you mentioned to me also people because people are working from home. They're needing an extra bedroom for yeah, office. office. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, they need an office space. So even a lot of people now, uh, kids are home or they homeschool and these mm-hmm. people are home. So it's just a, it is so much uh, happening. So some people are doing things differently. They're going to have more home offices. So they want another bigger home. They want more space. You know, kids are over there having school because you're not sure some people are going to keep their kids home. They may not ever, uh, you know, really kind of get back to that. Uh, I mean, in companies and colleges, everybody. So I think that uh, aided in uh, the boom. Unfortunately, and- too, truthfully, uh, that's not a positive thing, but a lot of people that were together or married, a lot of those people, because they were stuck at home together, they're like, oh. <laughs> you know, divorce rate is unfortunately scary because, wait a minute. <laughs> I like her or him. <laughs> so... I think some of that, uh, you know, some of that could be for good or not, uh, you know, unfortunately, but that's just the reality of it. 37, almost 30, 35% uh, rate is up. So now that's a lot of shifting and moving. So yeah. wow. selling and, and buying other homes and things. Like well, that. what made me go into real estate? I think initially was that I have a lot of kids. So I was <laughs> I family it was his two, my two and our three. Okay. Seven kids in the house. Uh, six boys and one girl and so I knew I wanted to work because uh, at the time my ex-husband had we had a copier business at the time but I wanted that was his business I worked with him and I wanted to do something that I could enjoy but I needed freedom I needed control over my time Mm -hmm. with all of the kids I need to be at the soccer game the dentist office that I need to be where I need to be more and have more control over my time yeah and I like people and I think I like the whole process of, of real estate, but mostly so that I could control my time so that I would have the freedom to fix my own schedule. Probably not the kind that was good at having a supervisor. You know, I can't get to work <laughs> all the time. That didn't work for me. Yeah. Uh, so I end up with wonderful clients. As a matter of fact, the, the, some of the people that's listening was a client turned real estate agent. Oh, Hopefully she, uh, you know, she'll get some good stuff from this as well. Uh, but that was definitely one of the reasons and started, uh, you know, and like I said, in the humble Kingwood area. And I just really had a good time and was able to uh, set my own schedule, you know, uh, be available for my clients, but be available for my kids as Let's well. Let's start. Where do we start? We know we want to get pre-approved. Am I correct? Well, you definitely want to do that. Uh, a lot of times uh, as an agent, you know, a lot of times people want to start with, let's look at the homes because they've already been doing that. They're on HAR or they're on Zillow or they're you know, looking at everything anyway. Uh, but the most important thing, of course, is to get loan approved. I mean, that is, you know, no sense in talking too much about anything else until you get loan approved. And it's not the most exciting part of the process. Mm-hmm. A lot of times people, you know, that's not what they want to deal with first. Um, but that part is is critical. And some of the, the some of the, the steps as far as once you make the decision that we're I believe I'm ready to purchase a home, um, you know, then some of the things that you you have to do is you have to um, you know come up with the what your price point is. The process is to connect with a great lender. Uh, a lot of most of the time I try to use local lenders. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason I do that is because you, you, you know, you want to do your business local, you know, I'm not knocking any of the big companies, you know, with what they do, but it is easier for the customer and usually for the, all the people involved. If everybody is kind of right there, we can touch and feel each other when we need to. Uh, so the first thing to do, of course, is to find a great realtor. You got to do that first on each Jackson. Wow. Right. And then uh, find a good lender and then decide on a comfortable price point. I mean, if you already live in a, in a house or an apartment or wherever you are, you know about how much money you want to spend every month. And so you want to get an, uh, an idea of that. And uh, of course, you have to have your, your credit score needs to be um, uh, where you can get qualified. If you go in with an FHA loan, which is a government backed loan, then your scores have to be at least a 580. And then you're going to go with a conventional loan, uh, then your scores have to be at least 620. 
Uh, so those are some of the things that must be done. So the first order of business is to deal with the lender, let them uh, do their application process, decide how much you can afford to spend, uh, get your credit report uh, done so you can see where your scores are. And then from there, they can, you know, determine what you qualify for, whether or not that's 100 or 200, 500, right. it is. Because some of the most important things that people, I think, deal with is getting to that point with their credit report. If your credit isn't where it needs to be, then you're going to work with that lender or with the credit person and get there. Because most of the time, it's maybe you paid some bills late. Maybe there's some old things on your report that really needs to come off. Mm -hmm. Get somebody and be careful about who you get because I think for me, I think a lot of the a lot of it you can do yourself. It mm -hmm. just, I've heard that too. Um, that's just my opinion. Can mm -hmm. any credit people or anything like that? But I just think a lot of things is it can't be that complicated. Certainly, if you've had a bankruptcy mm -hmm. or foreclosure, maybe a little bit time. I think is usually maybe three years or so you have to wait. But for the most part, most of the things, if it's late payments or uh, you may have to establish some new good credit. Or if your scores, you've been doing things, but your scores are still low, you want to talk to the lender to figure out the best way to boost your scores. It usually doesn't take that long unless there's some things that's just really bad. And even if it is workable, you just have to be determined that this is what I want to do and I'm not taking no for an answer. It may not happen today, but you have to know this is for me. It, it, it should be for most of us. Mm -hmm. Uh, buy a home and invest in ourselves because when you're making that monthly payment whatever it is it's not the whole thing going to 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 your equity your your value but a lot of it I mean probably somewhere around you know 60 65 percent of it that's your money that you're investing into your home versus being in an apartment that none of that is, is you. that comes to me yeah developers life and his children's life, not, not your life. Right, 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 right. It's not anything I think we need to beat ourselves up about and say, oh, well, I could have been, should have It's okay. Just here we are now. Mm -hmm. Investing in, in, a, in a home for yourself is a good thing. You just have to find the right time when it's for you. And you don't have to, you know, feel panicked about it. Just save your money. Put your money to the side. Mm -hmm. You're always working now. Do you have a, an amount? Because I hear people throw out these different amounts about how much you really need to have on hand for your down payment. Yeah, so usually uh, with, with most of these uh, FHA or conventional, is, is three three point three percent is the number. Uh, a lot of lenders would like to see you do 3.5% because you're going to need that as a down payment. Um, maybe a couple of years ago when you were buying a home, the seller might help you pay the closing cost. Sellers in this market, they aren't paying it. <laughs> so you're going to need your 3.5% down to purchase as your down payment. And you're going to need almost, this number may seem a little high, but you're also going to need about 3% in closing costs. So no matter what price point you're purchasing that home, you need 3.5% as you're down. That's what you need to prepare for. Mm -hmm. Now, we have lots of down payment assistance programs. The city has things for teachers and firefighters and just about first-time home buyers. So there's all sorts of wonderful programs for lots of people. Uh, I didn't know if I had mentioned it to, uh, to you, Trina. There's the affordable housing program that the city of Houston and Harris County uh, as and you, this this may seem low, but this is where this is this is this is what the program is. If you make anywhere um, no more than forty five thousand uh, dollars gross a year, the city of Houston has the affordable housing program. Which what they want to do is to create diversity all over Houston. Gotcha. Qualify, which I've had people qualify and purchase home on the program. Mm -hmm. You are a single person and make no more than a minimum of $25,000, no more than $45,000, the city of Houston can qualify you for their program, and the program will give you $100,000 to wow. of your home. Or if you're in a certain, it's not so much zip codes because you can move anywhere. Mm -hmm. Part of it goes by school district, school district zone, whether or not that school is an A zone, B zone, Z zone. That's how they figured it out. But they'll give you $150,000. So if you, let's say you make $45,000, 
but you may only qualify for about eighty or ninety thousand dollar home. Mm-hmm. I don't know where those eighty or ninety thousand so dollars. They're, they're they're hard. <laughs> I wish you could find me one and find me a three story townhouse for ninety thousand dollars. I take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. You, you're getting the line because there'd be a whole lot of people. I know, there. right? Um, oh, but, but then it, it you can add your ninety, you can add a hundred thousand to your ninety, and then it's a hundred and ninety thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Add your 90 to the 150. So there's guidelines and stipulations, but having your money ready is important because you're going to have appraisals. You're going to have home inspect inspections. Yeah. Um, you're going to, you're going to need to have your money together. But again, there are programs and a lot of people qualify for the down payment assistance. So, I know that some of my friends who have bought houses recently, well, my friend, one of my friends, and then um, one of my daughter's friends, they're mm-hmm. moving to Conroe and they are moving to, oh my gosh, New Caney. Yeah, because the land is cheap. Like what? Is yeah, that- well, the home prices are going to be cheaper. You know, that's not far from where I am. So I do. I sell homes in the, you know, which is in the port of any area. Uh, so let's say if you love Weston as one of the home builders or mm-hmm. David Weekly and all of these kind, all of these really wonderful home buyers, KB and all of them. If you buy out on the outskirts, outside the inner city loop, a lot of times there's um, 100% financing uh, in certain areas. And so you don't even have to put a down payment. You could do 100% financing. So that may be the case for some people and the home prices are lower because the builders are getting the land or less. So let's say if you bought a home in in New Caney and the home may have been, let's say a $250,000 home, that same exact home may be 450 if you go into the woodlands. You know, so the the difference is, you know, location, area, what that builder bought that land for versus the incline of, you know, so much is happening even for the people on the south side and Angleton. It, it was just kind of- Fresno is growing. Yesterday. Fresno and Paraland. Paraland, everything in Angleton may have, may have looked at land, even land in Angleton, maybe two years ago. Mm-hmm. We've been able to get, you know, ten thousand, you know, a square, you know, just square land for, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. But that, that's, that's over. Wow. Our market has definitely changed. But uh, I was listening to one of the economists, and they were saying it really and truly. Houston is so far behind in terms of. Um, real estate value. So mm-hmm. our value have been so low for so long. Oh. I think when they did the charge, we were like way at the bottom of this list of maybe a hundred, you know, um, mm-hmm. type cities. We were like number 90 in terms of where we were. So for, for, for sellers, this is good. And I think buyers have to feel too, that if Houston continues on this trajectory, that this will be a good day for you guys too. A few years from, now. I'm about to say when. <laughs> Even, let's say new construction. Um, the home prices keep going up. So if I have a client and they bought a home and they paid three hundred thousand dollars for that home, hey, about a month later, <laughs> that same home might be three twenty five. So now that person has twenty five thousand dollars worth of equity. So- and it's funny because a friend of mine, he bought a house and he, I mean, it's laid, like it has everything and a pool mm-hmm. and everything. He was only he's only been in it maybe three years. He's about mm-hmm. to sell it because the equity gotta go, gotta go. You know, and so for some people, you know, they're like, hey, I don't know how long this is gonna last. Mm-hmm. And truly, based upon everything that we're seeing, uh, certainly things may kind of settle down, but. We're not going to see, I don't believe from everything that they're saying here, I'm an economist, but just listening to, uh, you know, training and things that we're going through, it, we're not going to be plummeting because we were already way too low for the type of city. We're kind of catching up. We're just really catching up. It seems okay. like crazy, but really we're just catching up. Wow. And we have so many people moving here, moving from other cities mm-hmm. to paying, you know, big dollars from New York. California, uh, even I've, in, I've heard the California thing. People are moving here from California. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're they're selling their you know expensive homes over there and and just buying really and buying. making me not be able to buy no house right now. Pretty pretty. I didn't say that. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much because they're buying up uh, Houston and then our inventory levels are low. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
builders probably can't build fast enough and lumber is expensive and transport just a, we got a lot going on it. you know it's um it's okay you know once you make up your mind and decide if this is something you need you want to build for yourself and leave a legacy for your children and your children what do you tell uh, as far as because a lot of us don't even think about the down payments like we're thinking about can we afford the monthly payment <laughs> which i mean we pay at 14 1500 a month for one bedroom so, right. you know, yeah. so, now, so, you know, it's like, okay, wait a minute. I could be in my house, but you think about if I'm in a house though, I got to pay for something to break down. I got to pay for them. Like, yo, I got to pay. Tell, what do you say to a client that says all that? Yeah. So, so what it is, is that people really, I hear, believe me, I hear people say that all the time. Yeah. In an apartment and owning a home is two totally different things. Mm-hmm. So, I think it's just very important to be prepared for that because when you're in the apartment, because I, I hadn't lived in an apartment in probably 30 years. Uh-huh. I moved into an apartment, sold the house and then transitioned into say, okay, where do I want to go? What, you know, my life was changing. So I was trying to make adjustments. Do I want to live downtown, you know, and be in the thick of things, you know, what do I want to do? Yeah. Well, apartment living, you can get very comfortable. <laughs> I swear. You, got a, you got elevators now you got people picking your trash at the door and, the door and <laughs> this light bulb go out i don't have to make you a, just call somebody i was like oh my god this the is washing dryers already i mean it's just you late everything is, <laughs> i have the view of the yeah. awesome view out here I'm like, the pool is right there the gym is right there i'm like wait a minute what kind of business am i in this is me <laughs> Oh, people, I did say that to myself, <laughs> but, but the reality is, is I'm out of here. I've already put my notice in. Yeah. I've been here, you know, a year and a half or so, and it is time to go. Yeah. We can, we have to get uncomfortable being comfortable. We have to get uncomfortable because we're not building into anything. And real estate is still probably one of the, you know, the best ways to protect your tomorrow. So because, of course, the most important thing with buying a home is your debt to income ratios. So so we may live in apartments and we may be paying fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars a month and we can be comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Buying a home, there's a lot of factors that go into that. So if you're if you have debt. They, they're going to look at your income. So let's say if a person brings home $5,000 a month, a lender, their goal is that you're only going to use about 44 to 45% of your, your money. Mm-hmm. Even though FHA, you could get a, a, a loan with 50-50. So, they, so when they say 50-50, they mean when they look at your credit report and they add up your car payment, your credit cards, your house payment, all those things that are going to be on your credit report, mm-hmm. they only want to really see about 40 to 50% of that value. So though all the other 50% and 50 is high. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They just want to see about 43 they don't want to see so much of your money on your, your items that are going to be on your credit report because you got all this other stuff to pay because it doesn't it has nothing to do with your car insurance, your cell phone. Right, 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 right. So you right. still got to live. You, so mm-hmm. most of us in a lot of times live really tight. So even though we think we can, we can, uh, well, I could, I'm, I'm paying $1,600 a month at an apartment. I could get a house. No, that, that really doesn't mean that you're going to meet the criteria for the house for the house. And I think a lot of uh, one, another thing I think that causes some problems is that we may, like we said, we may live in great apartments or we may live in a great rental home, but then when you get ready to go buy, mm-hmm. you, 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 you're going to have to bring your, your, your levels down, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because, because right. things have changed. So you, that, you know, the landlord, you know, he may have bought that house when it was, 200,000, mm-hmm. you may be paying 1,600. Okay, that pays his mortgage and he might end up with 100. Mm-hmm. Or two, the, you know, if he still, he just bought that house. Cause you know, a lot of times people think the landlord owned the house. Well, he don't necessarily, right. pay, exactly. but he doesn't necessarily, he needs that rent and he needs right. a time. He needs I a say problem. that because 
I'm a prop. I manage some property. But no, no, no. He needs his money. Can you tell us what the word equity means for those who may not understand what equity is? Yeah. Well, the equity is the amount of money that basically you've invested in your home. So if you bought the home for two hundred thousand dollars and you're making your monthly payments, which we've already said probably about sixty percent of your principal payment, mm -hmm. paying is going towards the actual mortgage because you have. You have insurance, got to pay insurance. You definitely have taxes. You got to pay taxes. Um, so every penny that you spend is not going directly to your mortgage payment. So the equity is in the house is the, the value of the home. So let's say you bought that home for 200000 and then five years later, it's worth 250000 And your home is going to be the amount of money that you paid towards your principal. Mm -hmm. No, it was a thousand dollars a month, you know, maybe six or seven hundred of it, maybe is going actually towards your principal, which is your equity. Mm -hmm. so your equity in your home is going to be the difference of what you're paying, mm -hmm. right? Because you're paying it down. Mm -hmm. Also, the value of when you sell it. So you're going to get a percentage of it and is on going to top come of that the appreciation. So once you get appreciation, I mean, you could have somebody may have bought a home 25 years ago. I mean, they may have paid 80 or $90,000, have taken care of it, don't owe any money on it, you know, done well, maybe had a good interest rate or didn't. That same home right now, it could be worth 250 or 300 All of that is the equity in their home. The inspector you know, comes out and says um, the foundation is bad on your house. Mm -hmm. But then the, I guess the, the appraiser comes out and says, no, it's not. As a real estate agent, what would you advise your client? Well, <laughs> if the home inspector says that, let's say a home inspector, because you're still in contract right now, you're in your option period. Mm -hmm. You have five to 10 days and you're in an option period. That means the buyer may have paid the seller maybe a hundred or $200 to buy 10 days. Mm -hmm market, you're going to buy five. <laughs> so you have those five days or 10 days to determine whether or not I want to move forward to the next phase, or do I want to pull back based upon what I find during the inspection period. But if you pull back, do you lose your money? You're only going to lose your hundred or $200, whatever your option is, not your earnest money. Mm -hmm. You get the earnest money to secure the transaction mm -hmm. that goes to the title company and is for you while you're in your option period. Gotcha. Oh, you got to get an option period because you need to do your due diligence to make sure that this is really going to Sometimes you people just want to sleep on it. Mm -hmm. oh, most of the time it's because of course you want to get a home inspection right. and want to make sure that there's nothing wrong with this house and you want to have a good inspector to come and just check it out from head to toe. So if the, if the home inspector says that this house is, um, uh, the, there's got foundation problems. Mm -hmm. Now you have to make a decision. Do I want to back away from this house and terminate this? I'm only going to lose my hundred or two hundred dollars, and I get my earnest money back, and I move on. Mm -hmm. um, if you really love the house and you want the house, then you're going to try and negotiate potentially with the seller, and the seller may agree to do the repairs of the foundation, mm -hmm. and they can. Or you guys may decide to negotiate. Uh, but typically, the home inspector, you know, he's if he feels so, if a home inspector thinks that there's some foundation issues, usually for me, I would recommend that my client get a foundation person to come and check that. Check it. Okay. Home inspector, his job is to, to he's more visual. He's mm -hmm. going to visually check the roof. He's going to visually check the AC and the temperatures. But if he thinks something is wrong with the AC, now you need to get an AC man to gotcha. verify that. Gotcha. Or you need to tell the seller, hey, this is what the inspector said. I, I want the seller to have an AC person come and check, you know, mm -hmm. and they have to show the invoice and, you know, you have, you want, cause you want to be sure about those big ticket items. In terms yeah. of getting the appraisal, what happens usually with appraisals is that you're buying the house. Let's say this house is 250,000. Your contract price is 250. Once everything is done, you're all excited. You're happy. The inspection went okay. You know, y'all negotiated through some things. 
Now, a week or so later, here comes the bank, because now this is the bank that's going to be giving you the money. Mm -hmm. They got to come and do their thing, and they send their appraisal out. And the appraiser comes out, and then he may say, or she may say, this the value of this house is, is 210 mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. so now, the seller is upset. You're not upset. Yeah, no. <laughs> and then the house appraises at 210 Now, the seller is like, no way. I'm not sell my house. I'm not gonna sell my house for 210. That's that's crazy. And it's hard to get reappraised because oh. usually once an appraiser comes out, uh, I do believe, don't uh, quote me on this, but I think with FHA, that same appraiser, appraisal price, it's it's locked in. And it, no matter who comes back to try to do anything, it's set. Oh. Um, you cash and you don't need an appraisal, or maybe if you go in conventional, you can get it reappraised. But if you're going with an FHA loan, then that, that, that's what it is, unless you can get them to come back and bring in comps and this so and that. The, the problem, we, we're having a little bit of a different problem now. So I recently sold a client a home and the house was listed at $395. Um, and the clients loved the house. You know, they, they were good. They, they, they happy, you know. Um, we did the appraisal. And the house came back and it was appraised at 360. So this 360 is $35,000 less in the seller is like, no way. I'm not selling my house for three. I don't care what the appraiser said. And they can, they just, well, let's get out of the deal. Because mm -hmm. I'll get somebody else who's got somebody else will say, oh, well, here's the 35,000 cash. I still want, you know, they want the house yeah yes they want the house so we had to work really hard to negotiate with the seller uh and we ended up negotiating at 375 okay. so that meant that this now, the, that the, so that's the real estate agents part with the negotiation. yeah all of that is the real estate agents part the negotiations about okay. we were able to negotiate the seller back to 375 I think we were able to get them to leave their dining room table that the client loved and stuff like that. Uh, but again, that was tough. So what's tough about it is that now that house appraised at 375, I mean at 360, right? You, you're buying for less than it appraised for. Not the norm. I mean, I believe me, as, even as we've never seen what we've this is all new for us as well. We've never, I've never seen anything like this. Wow. It's been very difficult and concerning uh, for clients because if we're not sure what the market is going to do, I wouldn't want my client to turn around two years and try to sell the house and they can't even get yeah. paid for it. Now, we don't see that happening. Uh, but, you know, of course, that was, um, you know, that was my concern. And then also, too, I think in the case, I think truthfully, the, the seller mm -hmm. purchased that home maybe two years ago for three thirty five. dollars mm. That's what was really frustrating that the seller wouldn't go down to, down to the house. Mm -hmm. its value because you, you just bought this. Are the projections showing that it's good, the market is going to split to the um, buyer side at all in the next year or two? Or no, I, I, I think what, what they, what they're saying that they see is that we're just going to level off, uh, level off, you know, we're, we're going to, well, we, we got inflation right in, in our environment right now. And of course that affects everything. Yeah. You have inflation, it, it's affecting everything. It doesn't seem like it should, but it, it, it is. So I don't believe, and again, I'm basically saying this based on what I'm reading uh, the lectures and things that, that we're listening to is that we don't see this hard push, like from where we were to where we are. Mm -hmm. We don't see that just continuing to climb. I think things will uh, kind of balance off. And, and the reason we can sort of say that we are seeing homes on the market a little bit longer. Okay. We've seen some, you know, a push down on some of the prices. So so what 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 had probably happened? A house that would have normally been at 180, and they're trying to sell it at 250, and now you can see it kind of you know maybe 10 or 15 thousand dollars less. Why mm -hmm. is it such a hurdle when mm -hmm. closing? 
You get all this crap, all that stuff you just told us, that's a whole bunch of stuff. And now we got the house. <laughs> now what my closing date is on March 31st. I get to March 29th and they say, oh, it's gonna be June 30th. <laughs> What's up with that? Well, that that process I think is probably actually a very um, nerve wracking process. <laughs> you know, uh, I tell clients, I tell my clients that, um, that buying a house, to me, is like having a baby, you know, so you go through all these different processes and you know something beautiful is about to happen, but you have to be patient, you have to be diligent. And then now as you get a little closer, I'm going through the inspection, I'm going through the appraisal, and now it's time for the closing and I'm preparing for this and that. Now the contractions have started, you know, you're about three or four centimeters and you try. <laughs> that is a good analogy, I must say. Now I was getting Leave it to you for coming up with that analogy. <laughs> it's getting painful, it's getting real painful now, but I just want this to be over. I just want it to be over. Get it out. <laughs> get it out. Let it happen. You know what it is, just get it out. Right. So I do tell them that. So people don't like That's a very good analogy. To me, is a really good analogy because yeah, I say so when things get shaky and rocky, I need you to breathe and breathe and hold. <laughs> exactly, because that's exactly the way. So when they start going through things, I say, "Are you breathing? You know, are you breathing? Are you holding on? You gotta hold on." I told you, I told you in the beginning, like giving birth, you know. You're and about. so it's the underwriting process. So. A lot of times when people get to that point, so this is when the stuff really starts to happen because mm -hmm. now they're pulling your credit again. So they got to make sure that that's still intact. Now they want bank statements all over again. Now they may be asking questions about what's that? What did you buy right there? Mm -hmm. Some people go and start buying their literature and all this stuff and now it messes up their whole debt to income ratio. Um, some people have been working and when they started the process, they may have been working overtime. So all that overtime to get them here, they're not in and they tied now. And <laughs> didn't stop yeah. overtime. And so now that income, you know, is crazy. You know, so it's exactly. different things, or maybe they thought they were gonna have the all the money, but now they don't have it. And now you gotta try to get a, a gift money from your mom, but not a title company wants your mom a bank account information because they need to know where she got it to give it to you. Okay, I heard that nightmare before. Yes, <laughs> somebody had to pay. They had to pay. I don't know, a hundred and some dollars. It's okay. Well, how did you pay that? Yeah, I need to pay. all kinds of all all just so many. Uh, the guy I went to, I went through this actually with one of uh, my lenders. You know, and so 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 some. I mean, unfortunately, some people hours are cut at their job or they. Mm -hmm job or now they having a breakup or they got lose the house at that point yeah we just say obstacles oh yeah. look, these are all sorts of things that can happen at the end of the really at the end of the uh, the transaction that a lot of people you know just just you got to hold on so tight and a lot of these things are things that you know your conditions at the end you know mm -hmm. at the end of it here's all the conditions this and that this and that. I remember one of my clients say, oh my God, you know, they just want everything. Do they want to know who I slept with last night? Maybe. If they paid you for it. They... <laughs> Other words, you need to, when you got to the point where you were able to pay everything down and all your credit is good, that's, you need to be mirroring that at you the end. You need to stay right there at the end. Do not Build. I mean, the guy is telling me, I mean, some, you know, people, they, and sometimes it's because they don't know. And that's why I think it's good to have the, you know, a good lender, a good realtor, you know, yeah. communicate with that person. Don't, you know, don't go spending uh, your money on, on different things. I mean, uh, so it, you probably it, tell them that at the very beginning too. Don't buy you nothing. Don't, you can't do it. it. You know, some people, you know, oh, well, my car broke now. Well, now you got to figure out another way to do that. What's more important to you than getting this house? Because you get this house, you can go get a car. Right. That car, you might not be able to get this house. Right. <laughs> and what about, let's just say, if, because I heard you can't change jobs, but what if my job is going to pay me a lot more money? Yeah, if that job's going to pay you a lot more money and it's in the same industry, mm -hmm. okay. then, then that move is probably good. But if you're changing jobs, 
in the middle of the of 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 a of a, of a closing, mm -hmm. it's paying you more money. Uh, you may want to hold off and start that job after you. You, know. you just want pretty much everything. The same. lender, it's gonna a lot of things are case by case, but a lender would probably tell you, you know, if you can if you can wait, you might want to wait because it's some of the craziest things. Like you're saying, you could be making more money, but it's the shift. Of, of industry, you know, that, that they uh, they didn't like. Oh, like some people have gotten laid off and then they start back working. Well, now they got to work a certain amount of time. Uh, yeah, I think if you've laid off and get the new job within 30 days or something like that, then it may not change, but you need to be in that same industry, um, you know, if you're going to make those kind of, uh, those kind of changes. Okay. I'm, that was good because what I, what I mentioned to Monique was that Oftentimes you have you have the home buying tips, the first time home buyers, and da 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 da. But no one ever talks about the nightmare that is closing. And so yeah. once we at the table and everybody's sitting around the table, I don't even know who around the table. Who was around the table? At the well, you, well, in most cases, I think we used to. We used to. Everybody used to be at the table, but. Uh, I think certain things probably started happening. You know, people are a little more expressive and stuff now. So <laughs> you never know what can happen because I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of times somebody is not happy. Mm. So uh, does, the, does the realtor go? The realtor is going to go. A lot of times the, the lender is going to come. And if it's my buyer, I'm with my buyer. Mm -hmm the seller then they're going to come at a different time usually an hour or 30 minutes it's not happy you no. <laughs> so y'all try to come <laughs> that's not being here together gotcha. being here together sometimes this might not happen uh because <laughs> it's, I mean, it's crazy it's really funny because sometimes the seller could really be a very sweet person but that's usually a lot of times the way the buyer sees it uh, the sellers are going to be kind of biased about their home. You know, why would she be asking for this? This is fine. I've lived with this for 30 years and now she's asking for insulation in the attic. And, you know, this, so it's all, you know, so sellers take it personally sometimes. Gotcha. Are Especially if it was their house and they felt their house was perfect. Yes. And they, okay. a lot of times they yeah. do, you know, and so it's uh, sometimes um, it is just, you got to keep those people separate i get well, Monique, that i want to thank you for talking you know we only have so much time to talk but you gave us a i really like the the closing hearing about that and um awesome but i do thank you i well, thank you so much for letting me share hopefully it's been informative to some definitely informative. Fun, uh, for me you're so good at asking all of the right questions to get well, the thank right you i'm so good that. at that yeah Thank you again, Monique, for joining me today for a mini information session about the home buying process. And I especially appreciate you bringing in that little extra emphasis about the closing. It's that is something that a lot of people don't talk about. And we need to emphasize on that more. Guys, if you want to contact Monique to sell that house or buy your next new home, contact her at soldbymonique at gmail.com. And while you're emailing Monique, make sure you go to youtube.com slash chat with Trina, subscribe, like, share, and please comment. I would love to know what you think. Bye and have a good evening. Oh, don't forget to hit that bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video.